travelled from Asia to Antarctica on a voyage that would teach us about the connection between the two continents. We are drawn here by an explorer who has dedicated his life to protecting Antarctica and who believes Asia is key to this mission. This is a message from uh, Robert Swan from the Antarctic. The Pole Energy Challenge is, is on schedule, on time, so you all uh, feel sorry for us. It was bloody cold when we arrived on the aeroplane this morning. Um, a reminder of where we are, 600 nautical miles from the South Pole. So, all the very best. Message ends. Hello, this is Jessica Chiang, Eco Business. Hello, this is Jessica, Eco Business. We just got news that we're joining the Climate Force expedition in Antarctica, led by Robert Swan. 30 years ago, Robert Swan became the first person to walk to both poles. During his 900-mile march to the South Pole, he walked under the hole in the ozone layer before it was discovered. His eyes turned from dark to light blue forever. He suffered severe exposure but he kept going back for more. Antarctica was calling. Three decades later, it was time for another walk to the South Pole, this time with his son, Barney. It is my intention to inspire the world, to inspire all nations on earth to have the sense just to leave one place alone on earth forever. So really now the expedition has begun and it is a question now of testing the technology that we are going to use to make the first renewable energy expedition uh, on foot to the South Geographic Pole. Message end. We leave Argentina to sail 600 miles across the Drake Passage to reach Antarctica. We join a group of 90 people from all over the world on this Climate Force expedition. Among us are scientists, engineers, artists, journalists and activists. So the last great exploration is for us to survive on Earth. And we are in a place that we have a chance a chance to leave forever as a natural reserve land for science and peace. This is the end of day six. We did just under 10 nautical miles today. So lots of time for uh, thinking during the actual walking, eight hours uh, a day just by yourself in a little world in a uh, snow globe. So lots of time for a good reflection of what we're doing, what we're trying to achieve and feeling, uh, feeling a little beat, but some good stretching. We're gonna be ready for action tomorrow morning. Nobody owns Antarctica. It's the only place in the world that all of us, all 7.5 billion of us, have a responsibility for. And in the year 2041, the treaty that governs Antarctica, protects Antarctica, 
can come up for review. The only reason that anybody would come here to exploit Antarctica would be for energy, for, for oil, for, for gas, for coal, all of those things. So the easiest way to protect Antarctica is to make sure we use more renewable energy back in the real world. This is why Rob and Barney took on the South Pole Energy Challenge. In a world's first, they used NASA-designed solar ice melters for drinking water and biofuels made in Bangalore from wood chips. So this is the end of day 29 and we've just come up the biggest wave yet and today is definitely the hardest day. Pretty freaking knackered, super hungry, sick of hills, but it is damn beautiful out here. So I'm trying to keep positive but Anyone who says this stuff is easy, they've never done it. This is grueling work. But... I don't really know what. Just gotta keep going. Excited to share the tent with Martin tonight. Could cook, cook up some good grub. But I'm feeling pretty knackered. And I'll show you where we just come from. Waves are nice. It's pretty crazy stuff. Day 29. Antarctica begins to make an impression on all of us. We start to understand Rob and Barney's mission to protect the continent and think about how we can support climate action. This place, Antarctica, is really, really important. It's trying to tell us something and we should listen. I think a lot of people in Asia think that Antarctica is just a postcard or a destination on a TV screen or a wallpaper. Um, but really, it's a place that everyone owns. And I wish more people had a stake and understand what it is so that they could realize that what they're doing really takes an impact in what happens to this place. This is a binaural recording mic. It actually is right now wearing earmuffs. Wow. <laughs> it's an ear in itself. And it imitates the human anatomy of what it sounds like to record what a human hears. So I'm here to get authentic samples so that eventually people back home can actually experience what it feels like to be in Antarctica. End of day 39, knackered, excited to be in the bachelor pad, about to take off my boots, which are falling apart a little bit, and oh, it was a hell of a long day, nine hours of marching, this ain't easy stuff, I'll tell you that much. Quick update. So I've been reporting on climate change for a very long time and it's easy to get fatigued by reporting about that and to be down about the bad news and to be depressed. But this experience has just been all inspiring. We've met the most amazing people, people who are in their own way doing things for climate change. And the continent does change you. And I think what Robert said about being ambassadors of this continent is really true. Once you've experienced it, you want to protect it.
The Antarctic Peninsula is warming up more rapidly than anywhere else on Earth. It could raise sea levels as much as 11 feet, burying shorelines across the globe, flooding coastal cities, creating millions of climate refugees. Asia will bear the brunt of this. Our population's expanding. People need resources. But we can't just do it in the same way. We have to make changes. So I look very much to Asia business to see that this can be a business opportunity as well as doing the right thing so we can all actually survive on planet Earth. Antarctica has 90% of the world's ice, 70% of the world's fresh water locked inside of it. And even if we continue to melt just a fraction of that, we're going to see drastic, drastic, drastic um, repercussions on a huge level worldwide, and Asia will feel that. Temperature records show the peninsula has warmed up nearly 3 degrees Celsius over the past 50 years. Because the answers to the questions that we all have on climate change. We know climate change is happening. It's definite. There's no question, but how much are we causing it? What Asia does in the next few decades is going to determine whether we accelerate climate change even more and also in 2041 when the Antarctic treaties are for debate Asia is going to be in a position of influence and it's so important for us for people there to realize what this continent means and how important it is to protect it. So currently with the Antarctic winds we are charging my power bank uh, so this one will store up all the energy and then I can use this power bank throughout the day. So the wind turbine, uh, one of the fundamental things that I found out when researching about renewable energy was information available wasn't great. So I sought to solve that by creating an open source design where all the files will be shared for free online uh, and all the files are also 3D printable. So anybody with access to a 3D printer can recreate the files locally um, and generate power for themselves. I am the first Tanzanian to go to Antarctica since last year doing tree planting across the country. We were able to plant one million trees last year. This year our target is to go to two million uh, trees in Tanzania across the country. I mean, Asia is in such a complex state because it's developing so fast. Just being able to get access to rural markets and the growing middle class you know, there's a lot of just development projects that need to happen and what I believe and what I think most people believe is that the best thing that Asia can do is to leapfrog sort of older technology and move to the new and, it, and many industries have. Although it's surreal, it's beautiful, it is also a warning to all of us that if we don't stand up against climate change, this place will melt and we'll swim wherever we are. Asia will lead our world but they've got to be inspired to lead our world in a sustainable manner, as well as making sure that sustainability is good business. Young people today have a massive amount of information. What they don't have is enough inspiration. And what we provide in our own small way from our expedition is, is that inspiration. Hey, if they can do it, we can do it. Frankly, Personally, it was a huge success to have put together the first ever renewable energy expedition to reach the South Geographic Pole. This is Robert Swan uh, with the final South Pole Energy Challenge message from the Antarctic. Message end.
Good day everyone, this is Barney Swan reporting from the South Pole. It's very, very surreal to finally get to the South Pole where all the lines converge and be able to walk around the planet in a couple of steps. It's just a super, super special moment for me. To look after Antarctica, you've got to first engage people with this extraordinary place. Plenty more training and plenty more adventures to come. Thanks. I'm talking to myself on top of a mountain. Don't tell anyone.